So today we're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic functions. Let's start with the definition of an exponential function. The exponential function f with a base of a is denoted by f of x equals a to the x. Notice the x is in the exponent, exponential functions. Uh, here a has to be positive, but not equal to 1. And x could be any real number. So the domain of an exponential function is all real numbers. We don't have to exclude anything. There's no denominators. There's no radicals. None of that stuff that we've talked about before. Now, here's a fact. The graph of f of x equal a to the x has one of two basic forms. And these two basic forms are shown uh, in a very crude manner here in black. Uh, if the a value is what we call a proper fraction, so it's between 0 and 1, the graph will be decreasing. If the a value is bigger than 1, and it could still be a fraction, but it might be a fraction like 3 halves that simplifies to a decimal number bigger than 1, the graph will be increasing. The y-intercept is always at 0, 1, and it's 1 to 1, right? So it's a 1 to 1 function. It's going to have an inverse. A monotonic, underlined here in green, monotonic, mono 1, one direction. Uh, exponential functions have inverses. This is awesome. The domain is all real numbers, and the range is all positive numbers. Notice how uh, if we have a to any power, x could be anything, positive, negative, even 0, and that will never turn a negative. So the range is positive values. Uh, for the graph on the left, we frequently think of a horizontal rotation and refer to it uh, let's call that a reflection instead of a rotation. I don't know why I wrote the rotation there. We think of it as a horizontal reflection of the, this original graph. So this is our basic exponential graph. Uh, and this is kind of an alternate version, but it can all stem from here, just using reflections, translations, and uh, some of the shifts that we talked about earlier. So knowing this basic shape, we can now transform the graph using the concepts that we talked about earlier. Uh, let's graph a couple of functions. <laughs> let's graph a couple of functions first. Uh, f of x equals six to the x. The easiest thing to do with just a basic exponential function, since you get to choose the input, the domain values, we're going to take x value of negative one, x value of zero, and x value of one. If we put six to the negative one, right, that negative one tells us reciprocal, so that's one sixth. 6 to the 0, anything other than 0 to the 0 power is 1. 6 to the first power is 6. And so we could plot these points as close as possible. It's always an estimate when we sketch. We notice here that I have three lines for an equal sign, and there should only be two. That's just a little glitch in the system there. The matrix is real. Y equals 0 is horizontal asymptote because this function, 6 to the x, it doesn't matter how tiny x gets, we're never going to be able to turn this whole thing negative. So it's always a little bit above the y-axis, but it's always getting closer and closer. Next example. If g of x equals 1 half to the negative x. Now, we could do 1 half to the negative x, and I've done that here in the chart. So let's talk about that first. Again, I'm going to use my three easiest input values, negative 1, 0, and 3 negative 1, 0, and 1, 1 half to the negative, negative 1, that'll be 1 half to the first power, which is 1 half, 1 half to the negative 0, well 0 doesn't care if you're positive or negative, 0 is just 0, so 1 half to the 0 is 1. When we put in an x value of 1, that's 1 half to the negative, because right, the negative's already there, 1, uh, and that's a neg uh, negative 1 power is a reciprocal, so we flip over our fraction. 2 over 1 becomes 2. Now notice that this, re this negative exponent here in the original function, I could also simplify that first, and that negative can flip over my fraction and give us 2. We still have the x power, and check it out. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first power is 2. And that's why we say frequently that uh, if the base is between 0 and 1, a proper fraction, it's just a reflection. We can, we can take care of it with an a value that's bigger than 1. Plot our points, draw our smooth curve. If you miss a point, make it bigger. It's all good. 
Now usually I use negative one, zero, and one as my inputs. But using transformations, we know that this h of x equals four to the x minus three will go right three because it's messing with the x, right? It's opposite of common sense, so x minus three goes to the right three. The plus three on the outside, that's after we take care of the function itself, the four to the whatever, then we're gonna add three, so that's gonna be up three. Just like this previous function had y equals zero as an asymptote, this new shift up will be a new asymptote. So it's also going to change our range. Watch for that. Since my function shifted to the right three, I'm going to add three to negative one, add three to zero, add three to one. So these are my same basic negative one, zero, one, one, but I've taken into account the shift to make them easier to find. So we've put two in. 2 in the exponent, 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. I'll have 4 to the negative 1 plus 3. Uh, 4 to the negative 1 is 1 fourth, so that's 3.25. Put x value of 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 to the 0 is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, my second point. Put in 4 for x, 4 minus 3 is 1, 4 to the first power is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. And just to show you what happens with the zero value, we can still put zero in. Zero minus three is negative three. Four to the negative three, that's one over 64. I know it looks like an 11. It's just a, yeah, it's, it's a one. Uh, one over 64 plus three, which is a super tiny number, super, super tiny. But notice that these have the same shape. It's just shifted to the right, it's shifted up. But it's the same basic idea of the same basic exponential graph as we go along. Now let's use these graphs to describe the transformations. All right, so we start with f of x equals three to the x. Our new function g of x equals three to the x plus one. The only thing that's changed is the plus one on the outside, so I know that my uh, graph was shifted up one unit. For number two, my basic function is f of x equals 10 to the x. My new function is 10 to the negative x plus 3. Now, anytime you have a negative with your x, you're going to want to factor that out first to get an accurate idea of what's actually going on. So if I factor that negative out of the exponent, I'll have 10 to the negative parentheses x minus 3. So the negative tells me I'm reflected about the y-axis, right? It's messing with x. So it's going to be horizontal. It's going to change the x value. So the y is, is where we're reflecting. And it's going to be shifted right three units. Notice if we wouldn't have done the simplification, we could have gotten that right and left shifted because of the reflection. So make sure you take care of that part first. Many times, uh, scientists, mathematicians, we'll use the number e. Uh, e is approximately 2.718. When you get into calculus, you're going to know more about E and learn where it came from and why it's so amazing for scientists and engineers. Uh, but for now, we're just going to call it E, uh, this approximation, and it's going to be the base of what is called the natural exponential function. All right, natural exponential function. Uh, the number E is actually named after mathematician Leonard Euler. He's one of my favorites because he looks like the royal ugly dudes from... Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is my favorite. All right, I'm gonna pause here and finish this one out so it doesn't get too long, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about logarithmic functions as well.